Cat Hey everybody, CatSynth TV! And today we are looking at the Korg MS-20V, an instrument in Arturia's V Collection 9. Korg released the MS-20 in 1978. Designed by Fumio Mieda, the MS-20 and its siblings were intended to be affordable analog synthesizers to compete with the lower-end offerings from Yamaha and Roland. Some of the cost-saving choices, such as the simple design of the Korg 35 resonant filter and clever use of electrical noise, gave the MS-20 a unique sound. That, along with its simple semi-modular architecture, made it an instant hit with electronic musicians. In particular, its aggressive resonant filters are legendary and prized to this day. Korg reissued a sized-down version of the MS-20 in 2013. It combined the analog circuitry of the original, including the filters, with modern features such as MIDI and USB. Korg followed up with a full-size version in 2020. You have to appreciate the timing on that one. Arturia's MS-20 is a software recreation of this coveted instrument done in conjunction with Korg. It reproduces the look and feel of the original, with two oscillators, high-pass and low-pass resonant filters, two envelope generators, a modulation generator, basically an LFO, and other features. The patch panel shows the pre-wired signal routing as well as the optional patch points. The MS-20V also adds a sequencer, effects section, and polyphony options. Let's try out a couple of presets now. <laughs> Okay, we're now going to bring up the default preset and explore the features of the MS-20V in more detail, starting with the oscillators. Oscillator 1 has four waveforms, sawtooth, a pulse with variable duty cycle, triangle, and noise. We can set the duty cycle of the pulse manually. Or using the pulse width modulation, which is connected to the modulation generator by default. Okay, let's turn down oscillator 1 and bring up oscillator 2. It has a sawtooth, square, a pulse with fixed duty cycle, and a ring modulation that combines the sound of both oscillators. We can vary the ring modulation with the fine pitch control of oscillator 2.
Okay, let's bring back oscillator 1. By leaving oscillator 2 slightly detuned, we get a fatter sound. There is also a classic hard sync function to combine the two oscillators. It's more dramatic if we pitch up oscillator 2 an octave. Now a great tool to use with hard sync is an envelope sweep. Let us set up envelope 1 to modulate the pitch of VCO2, which will give us a nice sync sweep. We should also set envelope 1 to loop, so it repeatedly sweeps back and forth. Let's make the envelope a little faster. Now one last trick we can do with the oscillators is unison mode. Here, we stack several pairs of oscillators on the same voice at once, leading to an even fatter sound. We can accentuate the unison effect by increasing the detune range of the oscillators. The more the variance, the thicker the sound. Okay, let's turn off unison. And now the moment you have all been waiting for. The MS-20V has two resonant filters. One high pass and one low pass. Let's start with the low pass. Crank up the resonance a bit with the peak control. Come on, let's push that a little more. Okay, open up the low pass filter and let's check out the high pass. And crank up that resonance a bit too. Now one cool trick the MS-20V provides is to link the filters so that the cutoff frequencies move together. This creates a resonant bandpass effect. We can also set the cutoff frequencies to move in opposite directions. Yeah, that one's a little weird. Now there are actually two different versions of the MS-20 filter. We have been using the Mark II versions. Let's try the Mark I. the Mark 1. It has a bit more of a bite to it. But we're going to stick with the Mark 2 for the remaining demos. Now of course we can modulate the cutoff frequency. Each filter has two hardwired inputs to the modulation generator and envelope 2 respectively. Let's turn up the modulation generator for the low pass. 
Yeah. Let's turn up the envelope. We can tune the segments of the envelope to dial in that squelchy analog sound. We can, of course, do the same with the high pass. This is how one gets that classic MS-20 bass sound. The cutoff mod sidechain adds a little extra to the envelope modulation based on velocity. When you turn the sidechain up, higher velocities lead to broader modulation. Now of course I'd be remiss if I didn't demonstrate the infamous self-oscillation of the MS-20 filters. Turn down both oscillators, open the high pass, The sound that we hear is just the modeled electric noise. And now crank the resonance way up on the low pass. That sound is coming entirely from the self-oscillating filter. We can use the cutoff to change its pitch. We can try to play the filter oscillation using the keyboard. Patch the keyboard CV out to the low pass cutoff frequency. This knob now controls the external modulation. It takes a bit of experimentation to try and tune it to something usable. Of course, it's not really in tune, but it doesn't stop us from creating some interesting melodies. Now another trick is to drive the filter pitch using the sample and hold function. We will use the sawtooth from the modulation generator as a clock source, and the white noise generator as the input. Connect the output of the sample and hold to the filter cutoff frequency. You might have noticed that it sounds a little noisier than a standard sample and hold. That's because it works based on a threshold rather than pulses. So whenever the source is above the threshold, it just passes the white noise through to the filter cutoff and holds the last value when the clock dips below the threshold. The MS-20V has a couple of additional performance controls, the mod wheel and the momentary switch. By default, the mod wheel controls the pitch modulation. But we can do something more useful with it and control filter frequency. Simply take the output from the mod wheel patch point, patch it into the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter, and turn up external modulation all the way. The momentary switch is a simple on-off control. It passes a voltage by default, and pressing the button shuts it off. We can patch the switch into the pitch input for both oscillators. Turn up the modulation. Mm -hmm. 
If we patch into the frequency control for the high pass filter, we gain the ability to take the high pass in and out by pressing the switch. Now another cool trick is to combine the momentary switch with another modulation using the utility VCA. Let's route the output of the VCA to the filter frequency. Patch the LFO into the VCA's input and the momentary switch into the control. We will now have high pass filter modulation that we can shut off with the switch. <laughs> Now I personally wish the momentary switch had the opposite effect, on when pushed and off when not. Alternatively, an inverter module would provide the same thing. Perhaps they will include an inverter in a future update. Now one thing that the MS-20V provides that the original doesn't is polyphony. Using this little control down here, you can turn your MS-20 into a polyphonic synthesizer. Let's set it to five voices. Don't forget to turn down the oscillator levels. Let's add a little pulse width modulation. Channeling a little Stranger Things there. Now analog polyphonic synthesizers always had a little instability and variance among voices. The MS-20V has this little secret compartment where we can set voice variance for pitch, cutoff, pulse width, and other parameters. This provides an even richer sound. It's kind of subtle, just try experimenting with it a bit. The MS-20V also allows you to process external sound sources, such as other instruments or plugins. Now getting sound into the MS-20V is going to be different in each DAW. In Ableton Live, take the source track and route it to the MS-20V as a sidechain. In Pro Tools, route the source to a bus and then set the bus as the key input. You can then patch the external source into the input of the external signal generator. Now since most demos use guitar for this, I'm going to use a contrabass soon. Come on, live a little. Connect the output from the external signal bandpass filter to the external input in the main signal path. We also have an envelope follower and trigger from the external signal. Connect the trigger to the envelope 1 and 2 trigger, otherwise we won't hear any sound. Dial in the signal level and trigger threshold. Cool. Now we can start shaping the sound with the filters. We can use the envelope follower, which tracks the contour of the external signal, to control the filter cutoff, allowing the filter to change dynamically with the contrabassoon. Turn up external modulation. It takes a bit of tuning to get the parameters right.
Notice how the filter frequency changes with vibrato for a very expressive sound. We can patch the envelope follower to the high pass filter as well. Okay, now let's look at the sequencer section. This is an additional feature that was not part of the original Korg MS-20, though it does draw inspiration from the SQ-10 analog step sequencer. There are three channels, each with 12 steps of control voltage. There is also a trigger channel. Channel C has an option to quantize its voltages to chromatic pitches, and it is hardwired by default to the oscillator pitch. Channels A and B have options for 1 volt and 5 volt dynamic ranges, and have no default routings. Let's set up some pitches and triggers to create a basic sequence. Change the tempo. We can also adjust the swing amount. That's a nice catchy little pattern there. Well, at least I think so. Let's set channel B to a 5 volt range and adjust some steps. We'll route it to the low pass filter cutoff. We can, of course, adjust steps in real time while the sequencer is playing. Okay, let's set oscillator 2 to ring modulation and use channel A to control the pitch of the ring mod effect. Set some levels here. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. Sequencer can be set in two pattern modes, with A, B, and C running in parallel, or A and B running in series for 24 steps, with C remaining in parallel. There are also modes for it to reset on key presses. See how the lights first travel on channel A, and then on channel B, while channel C repeats both times. Now we can adjust the tempo dynamically using clock speed modulation. I am going to route the modulation generator to the clock speed input, so the tempo will vary quite a bit. Alright, maybe a little too much, but it gets the point across. We can even route one of the sequencer channels, like channel A, to control the clock speed for some chaotic tempo modulation. The MS-20 also adds an effects section. Here we can set up to four different effects from a large palette similar to what one finds in pigments, or some other instruments in the V collection. By default, we have a delay and reverb in slots 1 and 2, respectively. Let's turn them up.
I'm going to switch slot 1 to the BL flanger, which is the same as Arturia's standalone BL flanger plugin. Oh yeah. Now let's set slot 2. Maybe a pitch shifting delay? No, let's do tape echo. Let's add a reverb back in slot 3. Tune it a bit. And then a stereo panner in slot 4. This one will sound best with headphones or good speaker separation. Okay, let's turn the sequencer back on. Now that we have explored all the features of the MS-20V, we will spend the remainder of this demo looking at a few more of the factory presets. We hope you've enjoyed this detailed look at the new Korg MS-20V from Arturia and have some ideas how you might use it in your own music. For more information, please visit Arturia.com and check out the description below this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.